Welcome to the Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing a K-pop bowl cut. Let's get started. All right, so we've gone through, taken a center part, and then from the top of the ear, I sectioned that straight across the back. Now from here, I want my bowl cut to hit right at the top of the ear, maybe cover a little bit and go straight across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start and cut the bowl line first and then fit that in in the nape. So we're gonna comb everything up, down into my fingers, check where the ear is, and then cut straight across. Check and see if that's hitting uh, maybe a little shorter. And then continue that all the way around to my ear. All I'm focusing on is making sure that that line where my bowl is going to be is straight. I'm not worried about underneath just yet. Now at this point, depending upon how close and cropped I want this underneath, I can either scissor over comb or I can pull this section out and then cut in my fingers all the way down and graduate that. But I'm gonna take it kind of tight, so I'm gonna scissor over comb it. When I first start with my scissor over comb, while it's wet, I'm not worried about trying to get it perfect. I just want to go through and get a really nice shape to it. So I'm not going to work myself to death trying to make sure that it's perfect because I can't even see perfection. I have to wait till it's dry to be able to see it and fine tune it in more. All right, now from here, we're just going to take parallel sections as I go up and just build my bowl in. Come here, baby.
Not bad. Not bad. All right, so next section. So the first section I cut blunt. The next section I went through and point cut because I want to make sure that my line is still solid, but I want to soften it up. The softer that the line is, the less perfect that I have to be. And this shape here that I want, I want it to be kind of soft, but still solid. So point cutting these couple of sections will help soften that line up. Comb down. The only tension that I'm getting is from the comb. Comb right into my finger. Hold it down. There's my guide underneath. Point cut that across. One thing I want to avoid is combing into my finger and turning my fingers towards me. If I turn my finger towards me, it's actually going to cut the top layer slightly shorter than the underneath layer and it's going to cause the hair to flip and shift. So I want to keep this as blunt as I can. Well, I want to keep the shape as neutral as I can without introducing any kind of flips or shifts. Straight down. There's my line. Point cut that across. Now one thing that'll help is if I support the scissor with my ring finger, comb everything into my finger, you'll notice my ring finger sticks out and I balance the blade on that finger as I go through and cut. That way I'm not just cutting in the air, it gives me a more solid control over the blade. beginning to get a nice little bowl shape there. Now, now that I feel like I have enough sections to make me a really solid kind of bowl shape, I'm going to go through and lighten up the top layer by razoring it so it gives me more movement on the top layer without actually having to layer it. So I'm going to take my plie, comb the sections down and cut it exactly like I did before. Well, it's not exactly because I'm not using a scissor, but I'm going to go through and hold it at the same elevation, straight down, and then go through and just razor the ends. If I have some that hang over, that's okay. We're not worried about that line being completely perfect because I'm razoring it. I want it softer. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Ooh. All right, after a little mishap and a little a little boo-boo, we're going to continue on. All right. We're going to continue around to the other side and just follow the same pattern that we were doing and the same thing for the last section.
So I'm going to go through and take some of the weight out of the bowl. I just think it's a little too thick. And these doll heads tend to be a little thick. Maybe your client has as much hair and you need to thin it out. Maybe not. So now let's go through and fine tune our scissor over comb work that we did. Now I can approach this in two different ways. Right? I can go through and scissor over comb more and really start to fine tune, to really start to fine tune what I'm doing and try to get that as velvety smooth as possible. Now remember that I'm just stacking this all the way up. If by chance I get this kind of pokey ridge, then what I'll want to do is take and bevel that little corner right there so I can take all of this hair of my bowl, pin that up out of the way, and then when I start to scissor over comb this section, Instead of going right up and blending, I'm going to go over and bevel that top corner a little bit so that the other hair will actually lay down over it and it will lay much smoother without getting that kind of pokey kind of bevel that sticks out. Another way, another approach I can do is I can use my Tokyo thinning scissors. Now if I'm going to do the thinning scissor, I'm going to start with the cutting blade underneath and I basically just want to trace what's already there. I'm not trying to go through and thin the hair. I'm just going through and tracing just the very tips and that will go through and blend everything away in a much smoother way and be a lot more effortless than me having to go through with my straight scissor and scissor over comb this to where it's absolutely perfect. So this is kind of a, a way of cheating, but not so much cheating, just another technique. If the section right over the ear starts to get too pokey, then what I'll do is I'll undercut that. I can undercut that by taking it all the way to the skin and have the other hair lay over it, or I can undercut it just by taking the weight out of it. If I take the thinning scissors with my cutting blade underneath, I can go through and just basically, oops, I, I can basically just thin that out so it takes that resiliency out of it. So when the other hair lays on top of it, it takes some of that pokiness away without actually taking all the hair underneath of it away. So after we finish blowing dry, uh, I like the overall shape of it. I just feel like we've got too much width right here and it's a little bit too solid in the front. So I'm gonna go through and, and carve some of this out so that we have some, some separation through there so that when you brush it to the side, it's not quite so solid around the front. And I'm gonna take some of the hair out underneath to remove some of the width but I don't want to remove this kind of like solid bowl shape by layering it. So I'm just going to come underneath and thin some of that out through here. That seems to be working a little bit better. Yeah, I like that better. Take a little right back here behind the ear. And do the same here on the other side, but maybe not as much. I think it was thicker on that side, but wherever you have a heavier part, that's not uncommon. So 
So here around the front, I want to keep this kind of heaviness here. I just want more separation underneath. So I'm just going to take the underneath hair and separate that a little bit more. Oops, we got a little too much there in the middle, but that's okay. Yeah, I like that better. All right, here is my version of a K-pop bowl cut. You could obviously do shorter, do longer, perm it. You know, most of the time those guys have a real slight little perm to give it a little bit of movement to it as well. And you could probably do with a perm, so we'll book that next week. And uh, I think the end result looks pretty good. Nice cropped in. You could take that shorter if you wanted. Nice little flow around the front. So check out the Jatai Academy for more content like this. Leave a comment and uh, let me know what you want to see. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.